Hi guys and welcome to another Kemikaze creation video. Going to go through a bit of what I've been uh, doing on the old Celica uh, over the last few weeks. Nothing huge but uh, working my way through a few processes and I always forget to do it. Um, if you find anything useful or uh, you like what I'm doing, make sure you hit that like button. It really makes a difference on getting the stuff out there. Costs you nothing to do and helps me out heaps. So appreciate if you hit that like and leave a comment. Tell me about your projects. Tell me what you're doing. Give me suggestions. I always say I don't know everything. I'm just in here having a go. Uh, and especially with this motor, it's... Uh, um, anyone that's watched my Tirana series would have seen me working through the process of the uh, supercharged 202. Um, it's it's way out of my uh, knowledge base, uh, but I'm sort of rapidly learning some stuff and I've got some good uh, helpers on the way when it comes to getting that engine running again. Just knowing the intricacies of running a forced induction motor through a computer. This one's going to run the standard computer. I'm pretty much going to do the standard setup all the way through. Um, but I'll show you a bit of what I've been doing and then we'll talk more about that as we get into it. So here's heaps of the front end components, the lights and old hinges and a few turbo pipes sitting in here and just uh, everything to clean that front end up. And here's what I'm doing on the front end. So obviously anyone that's got an RA23 or TA22 similar model, same in a lot of ways. Um, they didn't come out with the uh, 1G GTE motor in them, but it was a pretty standard upgrade in the past. And that's the way I bought this all done up in that way. Uh, but it was done reasonably roughly uh, to get it running. First stage builds always cut a few corners, as I probably will through the process of this. But I'm setting up a new intercooler. Now, it's not huge, uh, and I may have to review that in the future. Um, but it is bigger than the standard one that was on the 1G in whatever car it came out of. Crescida or one of those. Uh, so I've had to... Um, just build a little bracket down here. This this has uh, three mounting points on the top and three down the bottom. Uh, and that's just a bit of angle. Uh, and I've just fitted it in on the original uh, chassis frame there. And it's just tacked at the moment. I'm going to pull that uh, intercooler off and then weld it into position. And the, uh, the bolts are obviously in behind. This is the front face of the angle. And then I've got the radiator. So it had been uh, a little bit modified. See if I can get around here and show you. Um, the, the opening for the radiator had been a bit hacked. And I've just smoothed that out so that I can get the radiator to sit in there nicely. And it's even both sides. And I'm going to either get some riv nuts or I might just drill a hole and weld some nuts on there. Um, so it's easy to fit that radiator and remove the radiator as the build progresses. So I've taken a fair bit of stuff out of the engine bay, uh, just getting it a little bit cleaned up, getting it ready uh, for finishing, painting. It'll be orange the same as the rest of the car. I'd to and froed with that idea of having it black, but I think I'm going to do it sort of as a show car uh, and tidy the engine bay right up so i've got most of the stuff out of there at the moment and my mission is to get the motor in uh, i've got to build a gearbox mount and build or modify the engine mounts so the engine sits in there in the right position um, but before i do that i'm doing a little bit of a tidy up on the motor and getting it a bit more together so obviously this 1G is reasonably modified. If you look back at some of the previous videos, I do talk in there about it uh, having been a rebuilt motor um, for the previous build. So it was all in pretty good condition. And I have the receipt for it. It says it was all built, new rings, pistons, you know, everything done, heads, valves, all of that type of stuff. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I managed to score. I was looking at building 
the forward-facing manifold, but end up scoring one off someone else's build and got it um, water blasted to bring it up nice and gave it a bit of a clear coat. Um, so one of the downsides, and it's not much of a downside of running the front-facing manifold, is I've got to relocate um, the alternator. So that's something I'm looking at. And I have been just down here working in around the motor. I noticed uh, when I pulled the engine out, it did have a mechanical oil pump, so it had a free line. And I thought that's a good thing to fix up now. So I'm just going over the motor and checking everything uh, is ready for me to slip it in because I don't want to pull it out and repair these things later. So I've got a lot of work to do on the hot side. Nothing is there. This is just sitting there. The manifold's just sitting there. That manifold came off that motor over there. So I bought the whole motor and uh, custom made manifold for a thousand bucks, mainly to get that manifold. Um, Six Boost does do one, but it's about 1200 bucks, I think, for the manifold. So hopefully this one works. Um, and I've got a spare motor, but it was running on that motor quite successfully with a single turbo. And that's just an eBay turbo. Um, but we'll, I'm sure we're going to fiddle and play with it and uh, get it to run on this motor. So here's the original fuel rail. It's what I'm working on currently. I'm going to clean it all up. Um, and as far as the first build goes on this, I'm pretty going, pretty much going to use everything I've got, try to spend as little as I can and get the motor running. So I'm just going to start to clean this fuel rail up and that'll be the next part I fit on because I've just tightened that, uh, that manifold up and uh, this is the next stage. Rightio, so I've uh, done a little bit of cleaning up on that fuel rail. Um, Pulled it all apart, pulled all the pipe work off it and uh, gave it a polish up. Polished up the brackets, found the bolts, got the, uh, they're the old injectors that are in there. And at this stage, I'll probably fire those ones. Um, if I get the opportunity, I'll take them out and go and get them checked and cleaned. Uh, there's a, apparently someone in town that will do that. And... Um, that's pretty much this cold side getting close to being done. There's a couple of little things down in under here. Um, so I've uh, got that oil sender done, uh, ready for wiring. There's a couple of knock sensors up in here, but up on top of the uh, oil filter, uh, which I think is probably well, who knows could be a feed line could be a return line have to find the flow of the water but it's a little um oil cooler um just off the oil filter there's an oil cooler and this is coolant fluid that's pumped in around here so i've got to run this pipe back into the system around the back of the motor because i've taken heaps of water pipes off this uh, especially used to run the um uh, throttle control valve up the top it ran right in through there and I've removed all that at this stage um, but there's a return pipe just there going back into the system so not too bad on this side pretty happy with that really like the way the um, fuel rail looks and uh, the intake side looks nice very nice uh, so now it'll be on to the hot side of the motor. Um, start to fit that manifold, get the turbo working. I'm going to modify this turbo. It has an inbuilt uh, wastegate, and I'm thinking about uh, sealing that up and using an external on the system because it did have an external one when it was running previously. So, anyway, guys, if you like this little engine, like what I'm doing, got any ideas that could help me, uh, people that have done this, please comment below about their changes, what they've done and how it all worked. Uh, I'm going to run this on the standard ECU, as I said, so it may be a bit confused with a few of the things that I've subtracted, but I'm sure we'll work our way through that. 
So if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, uh, subscribe if you want to see more about this car and its build, and I will see you in the next one.